I'm Marcia Cross. I'm a director in the healthcare group at GAO. Um, that's the U.S. Government Accountability Office. We're a legislative support agency. Um, there are two systems that FDA uses to um, review devices in advance of them entering the market. One is the PMA process. That's the pre-market approval process. That's for class three high-risk devices. And there, uh, a manufacturer has to submit an application um, and a, a substantial amount of information about the device and its operation. And that typically includes clinical data. The other uh, approach to uh, entering the market it, for medium risk devices, uh, those mostly for class two devices, is the 510K process. And that's named for the section of the law. Um, in this process, a, a manufacturer has to show that it's substantially equivalent to a device that's already legally on the market. And substantially equivalent means that it has to have the same intended use as the device that's on the market, and it has to have the same technological characteristics. Or if it has different technological characteristics, they have to be characteristics that don't raise new questions of safety or effectiveness. There have been some concerns about the 510K system. Um, critics have argued that devices are being cleared to go onto the market that are not truly equivalent to current devices or that have higher risks or other kinds of issues and that FDA has been too liberal in their application of this 510, 510K process to devices to allow things onto the market too easily um, and that the process is not rigorous enough. The Food and Drug Amendments Act required GAO as a legislative support agency to conduct a study to look at how FDA was applying the 510K process and to see if we found any problems with compliance with the requirements of the regulations. When we did our review, we found that indeed the 510K process is less rigorous than the PMA process. It's faster and it's less expensive for manufacturers. We found that FDA was approving about 90% of all of the, uh, per, the submissions that came in for 510K review. Uh, we found that that compares with about 80% of the applications that come in through the PMA process. The big problem that we found, however, was that FDA was still allowing some class three devices, those high risk devices, to be cleared through the 510K process. Now, when Congress first enacted FDA's review of medical devices in 1976, it envisioned that all the class three high risk devices would be reviewed through this PMA process. And instead, we found that more than 30 years after Congress took action, FDA still hadn't completed the, the process to require that all of the class three devices be reviewed through the, the, the PMA process. And what we found was about uh, one quarter of all of the reviews in a five year period for, for class three devices were going through this 510K process. And as I mentioned, the process is less rigorous. It usually does not require clinical data uh, typically what's submitted is performance data, statistics that are uh, compared to the specs for some other device that's already on the market. And that's not what Congress was envisioning for devices that are implantable, that are life-sustaining, or that have other kinds of significant risks to someone's health and safety. And yet FDA was allowing a substantial number to go through this process. Now, the, the device regulations are set up on the concept of a least burdensome approach to the manufacturers so that FDA can only require the minimal information that it believes is necessary to clear something for market. But that system relies on substantial post-market review by FDA. FDA is expected to be reviewing annual reports that are submitted by manufacturers. They're supposed to be reviewing adverse event reports, and they're supposed to be conducting inspections. We also know, though, that FDA has not been able to do all of those post-market activities. 
They're not able to review all of the adverse event reports that come in, and they're significantly behind on their inspections of manufacturers, particularly those foreign manufacturers that make up an increasing portion of the manufacturing of medical devices for the U.S. market. We recommended in our report that FDA move expeditiously to bring these class three devices into the PMA process. Um, we said that this was something that they needed to act on very swiftly, that, that more than 30 years had passed, and these devices should not be being cleared through the 510K process. Yes, um, FDA agreed with our recommendation. Uh, Commissioner Hamburg and uh, the agency uh, moved pretty quickly to respond to the recommendation, and in April 2009, they took the first step to go out and ask industry to provide information on these devices that FDA could use to, to create the regulations that are necessary. Um, there have been a number of critics in Congress. Um, there was a hearing held just last week by uh, the Health Subcommittee of the Energy and Commerce Committee, and a number of members of that committee um, have been quite critical of FDA in its regulation of medical devices.